Hi again. Today we are going to talk about another aspect of photosynthesis, and that is uh, the light independent reaction of photosynthesis uh, that takes place in the stroma of a chloroplast. So, the light independent reaction, as the name suggests, does not require light to carry out the reactions. However, what it does do is it utilizes the ATP and the NADPH which are produced as a result of the light-dependent reaction of photosynthesis and it is in the light-independent reaction that the chloroplast then incorporates carbon dioxide. What we're going to see now is we're going to see how does this happen in this light-independent reaction of photosynthesis. So when you have a look at this particular image that I've put over here, we can see that the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis generate your ATP and generate your NADPH and at the same time generate oxygen. And this ATP and NADPH then enter into the light-independent reaction where carbon dioxide is assimilated to give you your sugars. So how does this really happen? Now, the light-independent reaction is also what we term as Calvin cycle. And this Calvin cycle uses, as I said earlier, the ATP and the NADPH to convert your carbon dioxide to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. In the cycle, the Calvin cycle regenerates its starting material. So whatever molecules enter, and undergo reaction and then leave, this, leave the cycle, the Calvin cycle regenerates the starting material. The cycle also builds sugars from the smaller molecules and it does this uh, by utilize, utilizing your uh, ATP and your NADPH. Now a very important thing to remember is that carbon enters the carbon cycle as carbon dioxide and when it leaves the carbon cycle it leaves as glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and one more important point that we have to remember that for the net synthesis of one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecule the carbon cycle must take place three times and when it takes place three times, three rounds of the cycle, it thereby fixes three molecules of carbon dioxide. Now this carbon cycle that we are going to look at in detail in the upcoming slides has three very distinct phases. It has what we call the carbon fixation phase. It also has what we call the reduction phase and also what we call as the regeneration of the carbon dioxide acceptor, which is your ribulose biphosphate. So the carbon dioxide fixation occurs via the carbon cycle in these series of steps that I've shown over here. And if you look at them closely, you will see that carbon dioxide enters into the carbon cycle and it forms a very short-lived intermediate, and the short-lived intermediate molecule then gives rise to another molecule, which is called 3-phosphoglycerate. And then you have a succession of molecules that are formed. And finally, you will have, again, the regeneration of this particular molecule called the ribulose 1,5-biphosphate. And this ribulose 1,5-biphosphate is actually the substrate to which carbon dioxide binds in the presence of the enzyme Rubisco. But how does this really take place? How is it that you require three molecules to give you, or rather three molecules of carbon dioxide to give you one molecule of your glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate? And that is what we're going to look at in the upcoming slides. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the first phase of the Calvin cycle. And this first phase of the Calvin cycle is what we call as the carbon fixation phase. 
And the reason it is called carbon fixation phase is because the carbon dioxide that we have entering into the carbon cycle, this is fixed by the enzyme Rubisco onto the substrate, which is your RUBP. And in this particular slide, what I have done is we're trying to focus only at one carbon dioxide molecule at a time. So you have one carbon dioxide, which is being fixed by Rubisco to RUBP, and this gives you a very short-lived intermediate. Now, if you look at RUBP, it has one, two, three, four, and five carbon atoms. These five carbon atoms then react with one carbon atom from carbon dioxide to give us a six, six carbon compound, which is a very short-lived intermediate. So if you look at the number of carbon atoms, you find six of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, and these six carbon atoms form a very short-lived intermediate. Now this very short-lived intermediate, which is a six carbon compound, this then breaks up into two molecules, and these two molecules each have three carbon atoms. Now these three carbon atoms uh, make up what we call as the three phosphoglycerate, which is your first product or stable product of your C3 cycle. So this 3-phosphoglycerate, each 3-phosphoglycerate has a phosphate which is attached to it. So the thing we have to see here is that the carbon dioxide, which is the atmospheric carbon dioxide, is now fixed in this first step into a short-lived intermediate. And finally, this very short-lived 6-carbon compound breaks up into 2 compounds of three carbon molecules each, or three carbon atoms each rather. So this is the first stable product of the carbon cycle and it contains three carbon in it. So it is a three carbon compound. And this is what we call as the carbon fixation phase of your carbon cycle. Next up what we have is after the carbon fixation phase, you then have the reduction phase. And what happens in the reduction phase is that each of these three phosphoglycerate molecules, each of them are further phosphorylated. And when they are phosphorylated, they give you a compound called 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. So you have two phosphate groups. Here you have one phosphate group and then after you have the addition of the other phosphate group to another carbon in the 3-phosphoglycerate, this is converted to 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. So in fact, what happens is you have phosphorylation of the 3-phosphoglycerate molecule. Now when the 1,3-biphosphoglycerate molecule is formed due to the incorporation of, of your phosphate in the first carbon and the third carbon atom, then this 1,3-biphosphoglycerate is reduced. So each 1,3-biphosphoglycerate is reduced and therefore you have reduction which is being carried out by NADPH that we get from the light dependent reaction of photosynthesis. Now NADPH is oxidized to NADP plus and 1,3-biphosphoglycerate is reduced. When it is reduced, it gives you another compound and this compound is called glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate. So you have glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate as a resulting product that arises due to the reduction of 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. And this second phase is therefore said to be the reduction phase of the Calvin cycle. Now in the third step, 
what happens is that before this Bristol aldehyde 3 phosphate can enter into the Calvin cycle, one of these molecules, so here you have two Bristol aldehyde 3 phosphates, one of them exits out of the Calvin cycle and the others then re-enter into the Calvin cycle to regenerate your ribulose biphosphate. Now how does that happen? Because here you just have two Bristol aldehyde 3 phosphates, when one of it exits the Calvin cycle, we are therefore left only with one Bristol aldehyde 3 phosphate molecule. Now it is here that the question of three carbon molecules entering into the Calvin cycle to complete one Calvin cycle, one round of the Calvin cycle. This is what really happens here. So now, when we look back, we have here three of your carbon dioxide molecules. Each of them enter one at a time. What you have to recall is that when one carbon dioxide molecule enters into the Calvin cycle, you have the formation of two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates. So when you have three carbon dioxide molecules into the Calvin cycle, or when three carbon dioxide molecules have entered into the Calvin cycle, what you will have is you will have six 3-phosphoglycerate molecules because here, instead of one short-lived intermediate, you will have three short-lived intermediates because three carbon dioxide molecules have completed entering into the Calvin cycle. So now everything becomes a multiple of three. So like we saw over here, you have two phosphoglycerates for one carbon dioxide molecule. When you have three carbon dioxide molecules, therefore you will have six phosphoglycerates. When you have six three phosphoglycerates, you will have six one three biphosphoglycerates. And when you have six one three biphosphoglycerates, you will have six glyceraldehyde three phosphate molecules. And that is exactly what we are seeing over here. So you have six glyceraldehyde three phosphate molecules, which have resulted due to the reduction of your 3-phosphoglycerate molecule that you have over here. Now, if you recall, we had said that one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecule or one G3P will exit the Calvin cycle, which leaves us with a total of five glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules because 6 minus 1 gives you 5 glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules. When this happens, then what we have here is these, three, these five glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules, they become rearranged to give you ribulose biphosphate molecule. Now, how does this really happen? If you look very carefully, you have three carbon in this each glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate molecule, which means basically you will have 5 into 3 carbon, and that is a total of 15. Okay, so you have 15 over here. When this gets rearranged, this five glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules get rearranged into three molecules of ribulose 1,5-biphosphate. And when you look at the number of carbon atoms, you again here you have one, and then you have two, three, four, and five. This is a total of 15 carbon atoms, which is the exact amount of carbon atoms that you have in the five glyceraldehyde three phosphate molecules. So from five molecules of three carbon each, you land up after rearrangement with three molecules of ribulose uh, biphosphate and each ribulose biphosphate has five carbon atoms. And 
here you have phosphorylation one phosphate group but over here again when the three ribulose biphosphate molecules are formed you have another phosphorylation event where each of these three ribulose biphosphate uh, molecules are phosphorylated to give you your 1,5-ribulose biphosphate molecule. And this ribulose 1,5 biphosphate molecule is now ready to then accept again a carbon dioxide and the entire cycle repeats again once you have three carbon dioxide molecules that have entered into the Calvin cycle, then one gristaldehyde 3 phosphate or G3P molecule will exit the Calvin cycle and the other five will undergo rearrangement and phosphorylation to give you back your ribulose 1,5 biphosphate. And that is why this is called the regeneration phase of the, Calvin, of the Calvin cycle. So when you look at the Calvin cycle now, we can see that the Calvin cycle has three distinct phases that we have looked at. The carbon fixation phase, the reduction phase, and the regeneration phase. If you liked this video, then do not forget to like and comment. Subscribe to my channel to watch upcoming videos.